Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the ground generals. And the first thing we're going to look at today is we're going to look at the free generals. Now, let's just jump straight into the stats. Uh, with this spreadsheet that I've done, compiled the stats for the skill base, 5 star full ascension skill, specialty is fully maxed, and then their attributes. And then also if they have any little debuffs or weird things, they're listed down here. And then we have the totals down here. Now, <clears throat> to note on some of these guys, some of them don't take the skill attack book. Uh, Peter the Great also doesn't take the HP book, but that's the only other conflict. And then the thing to look out for is their clauses, like Meta and Yuffie, only work in the marching configuration. So be aware of all those things as we look at this. Well, let's jump right into it. Now, first we have Salt, who is in the relics, and a lot of people use him as their main. He has pretty decent stats. These numbers right here are the averages of all the free generals. So we're looking at a 270, a 220, and a 251 for the average. So we can see Salt has above average, above average, and pretty much average for HP. Meta above average, above average, and then above average. Trajan is a little bit below average, uh, above average, and then above average. Robert the Bruce, below average, below average, slightly below average. Oba, uh, pretty much average attack. He also can't take the skill attack book, so that sets him back a lot. He has way below average defense and low below average HP. So I know some people will recommend Oda and say he's an S tier general, but he's not. He's actually pretty poor once you look at the final numbers. Yuffie, he's an interesting one because he can also be used to march to uh, lead the mounted troops. And if you watched my video on mounted troops, You'll know that Yuffie is actually not a bad choice. He's pretty much second in effective damage for the mounted uh, behind Roland. So we can see his average attack stat. Slightly below average defense and uh, below average HP. But considering that he can also be used as a, uh, a mounted general, he's a two for one combo. He'll be slightly less for a ground and reasonable as a mounted general so he, he is a viable option peter the great below average below average slightly above average hp but he can't even take the hp book so pretty much worthless now let's note the march size trajan has a 20 percent march size and ufi has a 20 percent march size that march size is going to help us a lot in areas like attack that's going to complement trajan's attack and bring that 256 even though it's below Average, we'll see that in the effective damage that that calculates out to, it actually brings him up to one of the better free generals. So don't let this number fool you. Now, these numbers, they probably don't mean a whole lot to you. So let's go look at the effective damage calculators and see what we got there. Now, this calculation is done for a K40 2000% buff, which is uh, T15 troops. Now, this is for the main general. And we sort this by uh, highest, and we can see that Yuffie leads the ground generals for free with 52.6 billion extra damage for this specific march. Trajan's a close second with 50.6, and Meta's right behind him at 49.8. So these two are very comparable, but if we keep in mind from earlier, Meta only works for marching, Trajan works everywhere. So that is a considering factor, and I think that puts Trajan above Meta a little bit. Oda, Robert, Salt, and Peter. They're, they're a little bit lower, 3 billion lower. Probably not considering who we want to be using if we're looking for the absolute best. Now, let's look at the effective health. Now, the way this calculation is used, is uh, gotten to, is I used some formulas and calculations that were found in a Derek Defy's video, and I will link that below. And uh, that's the calculator that I used to get to these numbers. Now these numbers are going to change a good bit, but it's generally going to give you an idea of how close the health and defense are going to interact with each other, and give us just a general feeling of who is going to give you more effective health. Now let's look at a tier 12 ground versus a tier 12 mounted march. You see Trajan is in the lead for effective damage with 55, and this is 55 rounds to kill, meaning that that march with the calculations I put in is going to take 55 rounds of combat to kill one of these troops in a one-on-one -on -one scenario. But these numbers will scale up, so it's, it's just a general indicator. Mater's at close second, Salt and Peter both very close. 
and then down at the bottom we have Robert, Yuffie, and Oda. And then if we look at this as well, changing from a tier 12 ground to being attacked by a tier 12 ranged, made it jumps above uh, Trajan just by a hair, so it's not a huge difference. They're about equal in terms of effective health, and everyone pretty much remains the same. If we look at a T15 ground on ground march, we're not going to see a whole lot of changes here either. It's still pretty much even. So I think that Meta and Trajan are pretty much equal in terms of defense, health, and all that. But I think the thing that gives Trajan the win in this case is that he has the leading the army clause. So he can be used as a defense general. He can be used in battlefield to hold a building. He can be used in pretty much any scenario. He's very versatile. Meta can only be used during the attack. And the other thing is Trajan has that 20% March size, so that's gonna just gonna give you more troops into the battle, and that's gonna boost your overall health numbers more than a six percent that we're getting from Meta. So as far as free generals, I think that Trajan is by far the best. He's also, in my opinion, the easiest to ascend. He's only like 35 million gold from the tavern, so you can farm him from there quite easily and a lot faster than if you were just using relics. Now, that's the free generals out of the way. My thoughts, Trajan's the best, Meta is a close second. The others, I really wouldn't worry about them too much, unless you use Yuffie for the versatility that you get from him and uh, leading a mounted march. Now let's talk about the premiums. You see the averages overall for the premiums, 307 attack, 272 health and defense. So that's going to be kind of like the bar for an average for a premium that we're looking at. And then also we can see that a lot of the premiums have the marching clause instead of the leading clause, which is the inverse on the free generals, where most of them were leading and only a couple were marching. So that's a thing to keep in mind if you're looking for more versatility out of your premium generals. Now let's start with Sween Forkbeard, or however you pronounce that. Now these colors down here, the color in green is highlighted as the highest in that stat. Yellow is highlighted as the second highest. So we can see that if we're looking for uh, pure attack, Luzon is the highest attack stat. Sween Forkbeard has the second highest attack stat. We got 232, two, that's pretty above average. 288 and 265, so slightly above average and then slightly below average for that. With an 8% march size, that's not bad. It's not great, but it's not, it's not terrible. It's pretty decent. And he also has to keep in mind, he has some uh, covenants. And the Covenants, they're not, he, he has a pretty weak Covenant in my opinion. Most of the Covenant is locked behind the In Rally Clause, and I don't add the In Rally Clause to any of the calculations here because it's very conditional. The only things he gets from not being in Rally is like 5% for attack, uh, HP, and defense. It's pretty low overall, so not a huge game changer for him. Next we have Pyrus, uh, slightly above attack below average and then above average for health. So pretty just standard numbers, 6% march size, pretty low, but he can be leading the army as is the same with Sween. But we'll look at the effective numbers later to see who we would prefer on these two if we're wanting for somebody that has a, you know, just an all-rounder. His other all-rounder would be Tureen, but we can also see that he cannot take the attack book, so that does set him back. And we'll see that in the effective damages where I put that into the calculator as well. He has, a uh, pretty average attack, and then below average and above average for health and defense, which is pretty par for the course from what we've seen so far. 12% march size is pretty nice. It's not the best, but it is a very good number. We also have Orle Orle Orlean here. Aurelian. Aurelian. Got 316 attack. 267, and then he has the highest uh, health stat of any generals, and we'll see that in the effective damage. That's going to help him out a lot. But the defense stat being lacking, it's going to hurt him in some of the calculations, but not all of them, and I'll show you in a minute. Next, we have Basil the Second. Basil the Second can also be used as a mounted general, so there's use for him there. But overall, his stats are pretty low. He is far below average in all of these categories, and generally just not a not a good general at all. Let's compare him actually to Yufi and see how that works out. So we have 271 to 273, 211 to 228, and 227 to 225, and then Yuffie has a 20% march size. So Yuffie is literally just the more superior version of Basil II. There's literally no reason to use Basil 
if you want someone that fills that niche, you can just use Yuffie instead. So he's not useful. Next we have Scipio, 282, 277, so slightly above attack and defense, and he has pretty he has pretty uh, decent in the effective health. 273, so below a average attack, which is going to hurt him, and then only a 6% march size. So his attack's going to be lacking, but he is pretty chunky overall for troop survivability. Next we have Guan Yu, 296, that's below average, below average, and then barely average, and a 6% march size, so... He doesn't really have a niche for this. It's a marching general, and his stats are pretty below average. I wouldn't really recommend him. Luzon. We can see he's first for effective damage, and then second for effective defense, with an above average health stat and a 14% march size. So that's a pretty nice march size. And this does put him in uh, the top brackets on both the attack and on the defensive side of things. So we'll see him later. He's probably going to be the best ground general, in my opinion. But we'll look at that in a minute. Next we have Alexander the Great, 296, so slightly below average attack, health and defense are way below average, and we'll see that he's very squishy with his marches, you're going to be taking a lot of casualties. But he does have a 30% march size, which is going to boost his attack, and this is actually an insane number for march size, especially considering he can still take the march size book. So the highest march size general that you can get in the game is... Uh, that guy from Mongolia, Genghis Khan, he has a 31% march size when fully maxed out. So you're just 1% behind him, but this guy can take the march size book, and uh, Genghis Khan can't. So I think that's worthy to keep in mind just for the sheer march size of this, even though the rest of his stats are a little bit lacking. And he also has a 15% rally capacity, which, uh, you know, rallies are nice sometimes. Next we have Elise. Elise is an interesting one. A lot of people use her because she's, you can get her from the Blood of Ares event, but you can also get a couple of these guys from there. I think Scipio you can get from there, and also Ludwig, I believe, can be gotten from that event. So, uh, yeah, she's easier to obtain than all the others. Not all the others, most of the others, and a lot of people use her. Her skin is 15% uh, defense and 15% to uh, HP. That's not in these numbers here, but they'll be in the calculations included there. Overall, her attack is uh, average, slightly below average defense, and pretty decent defense. She's tied for second place, tied with Ludwig. 14% march capacity is nice, so she is a very decent general to choose, and one of the better ones. Next, we have Alessandra. Uh, below average attack, the highest stat for defense, and below average health. So we'll see how these things work out in the calculations especially when we compare her to Arlian, because Arlian has low defense but the highest health and it's the total inverse for Alessandra so we're going to see in which situations the health is going to help you more than versus the defense in those situations. She also has an 8% march size which is reasonable and then uh, finally we have Ludwig. Ludwig 322 attack that's above average above average defense second highest health and a 16% march size, so Ludwig is a very solid general all around. Yeah, and that's it for the numbers. Now let's see how these numbers are going to help us calculate all of this stuff. Now, we're calculating for K40 March 2000% buff. I don't remember how many millions of troops. I think it's like 3.5 million in this calculation. But the numbers are going to be pretty similar across the board, no matter what march you're using. At the top, we see we have Alexander with a 61.6 .6 billion increase which is, as we already stated, due mainly to his 30% march size, which is just massive. Second place, we have Luzon and Sween tied. The 59 here in parentheses, that's the calculation with his uh, covenant added. Without the covenant, you're only going to be getting 54 billion, but that extra 5 billion from the covenant is pretty nice, and it buffs up on the list. Luzon is second place, 59 billion, very solid choice. Ludwig, 57, Elise, 54, Tureen, 53. And then going down from here, it's uh, we hit our first free general, so anything below that I probably wouldn't recommend, unless you're looking for someone with like uh, more versatility like Pyrus. And let's look back a second and see which ones have the leading claws again. Tarine, Pyrus, and Sween. So if you're looking for versatility and you're looking for the leading claws, Sween's going to be your highest damage for that category. Pyrus and Tarine, also not bad choices. 
but you know you're sacrificing a little bit of attack for that a little bit extra versatility now let's look at how they compare with the stats for a t15 ground on a t15 march the top of survivability is ludwig 66.7 extra turns of combat very close second is luzon and then at 65.7 we have elise with the skin followed by uh, Arlian, Alessandra, and Scipio, Pyrus, and Terrain. Guan Yu's a little bit lower than the rest, but all these are reasonably close, so they're all pretty solid choices no matter who you choose. If we swap it up to a different type of March T12 range attacking T12 ground, we can see that not really anything is going to change for this. All these guys are going to stay in their same positions but they're all going to remain reasonably close, with 124.9 turns being the highest, and about 120 for Alessandra down here. Scipio does fall off in this calculation. And let's look at his stats real quick and see why that's happening. He has pretty high stats in both, so I guess it's just the fact that he just has a little bit less overall, and he was a little bit lower than Alessandra by 2 billion. So it makes sense for him to lose out a couple extra turns once we scale back the damage a little bit and add more to that. Now let's look at this one right here. This is T15 ground attacking T15 ground. And we are going to see a little bit of changes here, mainly in uh, this section right here. We can see that Ludwig is still number one, Luzon is still number two, and then number three would be Elise with uh, Alessandra number four, and then number five would be Swain. So these guys are pretty much all the same. But let's go back. We see Arlie in here, 196, and then who I said I wanted to compare him to earlier was Alessandra. So let's compare Alessandra and Arlian. And let me mark these two real quick before I lose them again. So we can see that for a T15 ground on ground march, Alessandra is going to be far more effective. But if we go down to this one, we're going to see that Arlene is slightly more effective. Now, does this mean that in certain situations, Arlene and Alessandra are going to be better? Yes, it does, but those are very niche situations because this calculation is done with no buffs to the attacker. Now, let's come over to this calculator right here. Now, these stats right here are all plugged in, damage modifier, and then the base stats for a T15 ground. This number right here is the attack percent, so this is going to be a 500% buff, which is pretty reasonable. 267 and 311, I believe that is for Arlene, 267 and 311. We see that's going to give him a 9 nine turn round to kill. So this is the same calculation as before, just with the extra 500% on the attacker. Now let's plug in the numbers for, uh, for Al Alessandra. Alessandra has 317 and 265. Hers is going to come out to an 8.6, 8.7 for the effective turns to kill. So very similar. So even though in this one calculation it does show Alessandra is better, this calculation really only matters because Alessandra has a lot higher defense than Arlian. Arlian is higher in health, Alessandra is higher in defense. And the defense stat works best when you have troops that have a very high defense stat, but also an enemy that has a low attack stat. If the enemy has low attack stat, then you're going to get more work out of that defense versus if you uh, were using health. In most cases, practical use cases, you're going to be better off with a higher health than with a higher defense stat. And that's just general rule of thumb. I don't have any formulas, unfortunately, like to say 30% defense is equal to 10% HP because it's very dependent on who's attacking you and what troops they're leading. So. For now, we just use these to get a kind of general idea of how they're going to perform. And we can see that these two are going to perform about equally in most situations. Now, with all those numbers out of the way, let's look at this over here so we can try and figure out who really is the best. I pulled the top five for damage and the top five for health ranking, and then we have March size in here. We can see that Alexander comes in first for damage, but he's ranks 15th in health, so he's gonna have a very weak march, but high attack and a very high march size. So if you're wanting to choose him, it's important to keep in mind of that health stat. 
so he's probably not the best all around general. Number one for health overall is going to be Ludwig with fourth in damage, so pretty solid overall and a 16% march size is nice. I'd say Ludwig is definitely one of the top three generals. Next we have Luzon who ranks second in health, second in damage, and a 14% march size. So I think overall for the best all around general, Luzon is going to be your best bet. He's going to be the most useful. And then at least third in health, fifth in damage. Not as not as good as the others, but still a solid choice in a 14% march size. And then we have Alessandra down here. Fifth in health, twelfth in damage. Sween is third in damage and sixth in health. So Sween isn't a bad choice. And he also has the claws of leading, so he's more versatile than most of these others. And let me double check again, make sure I didn't forget anyone. Tureen and Pyrus. Yeah, Tureen and Pyrus didn't even make it into the calculation for right here. So I think if you're looking for a leading the army general, Sween is probably your best choice. And then Arlian we have here, he ranks 4th for health and 13th in damage, so he's not really worth choosing, and he has 0% march size. So out of all these guys, I would say that Luzon is definitely the one I would recommend if you have a choice. Swain is the one you want if you just want a little bit more versatility, you want to hold some buildings, you want to maybe throw them on the wall for some reason. Uh, and then close second to the best overall would probably be Ludwig. And then I'd say Elise probably gets third place in this. I think that Ludwig's just a better choice. Ludwig and Luzon are both better than Elise. And these numbers here are based off of Elise's skin as well. And Sween's, uh, his covenant. So keep that in mind. And then we're just going to go over the assistant stats real quick. We're not really going to look at all of them individually. We're just going to look at some outliers. Uh... We can see that for assistant, Luzon has the highest uh, defense stat, highest attack stat, and 54 uh, health. So 50 is, we're looking at it, it's, it's, not, it's reasonable as an assistant. 0% march size though, so that does hurt his effective damage versus if he uh, had a little bit of march size with that also. Second place for attack, we have Ludwig and Sween tied. Ludwig has a 6% march size, and then Sween doesn't get any march size as an assistant, so... In a assistant competition, I think Ludwig wins because of the march size, and then these two stats right here are higher than Sween's. Luzon has some use if you just want the attack and you don't need the march size. If you're looking for march size, Alexander the Great has a 16% march size in assistant, pretty much non-existent defense and HP, and then a decent bit of attack, so he could be a viable option as an assistant if you really need that march size. And then... For the free generals, really none of them are worth using as an assistant. Simply for the fact that you don't need the red stars for your assistant. You're only looking at specialties. And you can get these premiums. You can get them from a lucky drop. You can get them somewhere, somehow, without spending any money. So it's better just to wait until you can get one of these guys and then work on them instead. And then let's look at the effective damage that we have on the assistant side of things. Because we ran the numbers for that as well. For assistance, who's going to give us the highest damage? Sween's going to give us the highest damage as an assistant with 20.7, and that includes the Covenant. Second place is going to be Alexander, 20.4, due to that massive march size. Ludwig, third place, not too far behind. And then we also have Meta in here with 18.6. So Meta does have a pretty high assist damage as an assistant, so that's useful to keep in mind. And after that, Pyrus, Alessandra, Luzon, Guan Yu, nothing really special here. Let's look at the survivability for the assistants. The most survivable assistant is going to be Ludwig or Scipio. Scipio, keep in mind, he has pretty low attack stats as an assistant, whereas Ludwig has pretty decent attack stats as an assistant, so I think I would favor Ludwig over Scipio in this situation. We also have uh, Luzon coming in 14, very close. Luzon also, you know, he's doing pretty good, but as an assistant, he does lose out on a lot of that attack. So I think Ludwig is the better assistant overall. And then we have Pyrus, Arlian, Termin, Alessander, pretty much the same stuff we've been seeing already. All pretty close in terms of attack. And let's look at this one right here and see how far that widens. It doesn't widen by a lot. They're all still very neck and neck depending on which march you're facing for these T12s. 
So that's uh, useful to keep in mind. It's not going to be the end of the world if you choose one that's a little bit lower, because you're, you're pretty much getting the same thing. It's just not min-maxed to the max. But the attack stats over here, they do matter a little bit more, as we can see. There's a little bit more uh, things, so we might want to weigh that a little bit more heavily when we're deciding on who to use as an assistant. We've also done the rankings over here for the assistants. We can see the first for damage is Sween, and number six in health, so a pretty solid choice. 5% march size is a nice little buff. Not great, but not terrible. Alexander, number two in damage and 16% march size. Wait, I thought he was number one in damage. Oh no, I'm looking at the wrong one. So Alexander is second in damage. He ranks 18th in health, and we can see that he's really far down on the list right here, down from the rest, so that's useful to keep in mind. 16% march size is pretty nice, though. So maybe if you have a main general that doesn't have any march size, and you want to complement that, you could uh, throw him in with there, but be mindful of the health value. Ludwig ranks second for health and third for damage. 6% march size is pretty solid. Luzon, first for health, seventh for damage. So the health stat is nice, the damage stat a little bit lacking, and 0% march size, so that's going to set him back. Scipio, third for health, 13th for damage. Like I said, he really lacks in the damage, but he does have 6% march size. Pyrus, fourth for health, fifth for damage. Not bad, 6% march size. You're working with what you're working with. And this is the reason we're not going to use Meta, is he has four, fourth in damage, but he's 14th for health. His health as an assistant is pretty lacking. Overall, the best assistant I'm probably going to say is Ludwig. Second place, I would probably give to Sween or Luzun, depending on what you want them for. I forgot about Elise entirely. She ranks 5th in health, 12th in damage. If you're using Elise as an assistant, probably don't. Just use someone else instead. Ludwig's pretty easy to get. I'm pretty sure he's in the Ares Ascension event. And then Pyrus, 4th and 5th, a pretty solid choice overall, and he does have that versatility. If you're looking for an assistant to pair with uh, Sween, I'm not sure if they're compatible or not. I didn't check that. But if they are compatible, they both have the marching claws, and you can use that march together anywhere. So that would be something to look out for. Alright, so hopefully y'all found all this information useful. Like I said, this isn't a absolute best guide. It's just general ideas and numbers to help y'all choose the best march for your situation and what you need. But the overall notes from it is if you're a free-to-play player, the best general for you to choose is Trajan. Second place in that would be Mado, but you have to remember he doesn't have the march size and he doesn't have the leading clause in his thing. For premium generals, for the best main general, we're probably going to be looking at Luzon as the absolute best overall general. With Ludwig in a close second, and then Elise in third place. The new General Sween is still a solid choice. He does pretty good with all of the numbers, so if you want to use him, he's a viable choice. And he also has the leading clause, so he's more versatile than the other three that are above him. If we're looking at assistants, don't use a free General for an assistant. Just wait until you get one of the premiums that are good. The best overall assistant is going to be Ludwig. Second place, probably Sween or Luzon. They're pretty close. Pyrus is also a solid choice as an assistant, but Ludwig is the best. If you need a lot of march size and you're looking for that for some reason, Alexander or as the main or as the assistant is going to give you the most march size overall. I just finished editing this video, and it's a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, so if you watched all the way through, I just want to thank you. Watching the whole video really helps my channel grow. And it's giving me that watch time, which is what I'm really needing for monetization on the channel. If you just skip to the end to look at the conclusions, please consider opening another tab and just letting the video run in the background. You don't have to watch it. Just give it a little bit more watch time so I can pump those new, those uh, YouTube numbers. That's uh, all I have for today. Hopefully y'all guys found this information useful. All the links for uh, the resources that I used in this and the links for the spreadsheet are going to be in the description below. So if you want to download these yourself and use them so you can reference them in the future, uh, feel free to do that as well. And uh, I hope you'll have a good one.